by your name and I'll call you by mine. You wrote this book in four months, which I just think is amazing. Uh, so I'm curious as to what your process was like. The process was very simple, is mm -hmm. that I was writing a novel which was quite difficult. And so one day I just woke up and I went to my computer and wrote about Italy, about a house in Italy. I was going to tinker away and then I was going to go back to my novel, which was giving me a hard time. Except I kept writing. By about three pages, four pages, I liked this. This is fun. This is liberating, among other things. And I kept going and going and going. And at some point, I realized that I had a novel. And correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. I heard that initially the main characters, it was a heterosexual couple. Yes, initially. But yeah. it, it changed right away. What, what made you make that change? I find that writing about a heterosexual relationship, it's usually unnatural for them not to have sex right away. And I wanted there to be an inhibition of some sort. And I couldn't do it with, with a girl, with a woman. If you notice in the, in the movie especially, the sex is almost immediate with the girl. And so I decided I was going to write something that was a bit different, where there would be two men. And if there was a hesitation, it was not hesitation that Elio feels that there's something wrong here. It's more like he doesn't know how to bring up the subject because he's totally honest with himself. He wants to sleep with Oliver. There's no mystery in his head and he's not reluctant to go through the physical aspect of it. What he has a hard time is confronting the other person. Right. And, and that, was, that was, for me, was very sexy. I think people are, might still be surprised to learn that you are not gay. You yeah. identify as straight. So how, how does a straight man write a book that is considered a modern gay classic? The real answer is that, what is it that gets the author excited? What gets you turned on? I, I never knew that I would be turned on by this, but I fell in love with these two characters. I felt that there was something so powerfully genuine in what they felt for each other, that it was coming from me. Right. But you don't have to be straight or gay, whatever, to, to capture that. And I wanted them to not only feel the reluctance that you have at the beginning, but also the gratitude, the liberation that comes when you finally spoken and you finally are in bed together, and this is actually intimacy at its most raw. You know, there's a lot of debate in the literary world about authority, who can write certain stories, oh, and whether yeah. that person has to have that specific experience right. in order to be able to access those worlds and write them in novels. Um, you know, there are some people who might say that because you're straight, you're not allowed to write a story like Call Me By Your Name. What would you say to those critics? I mean, I don't agree with it because I think that if you are unable to step out of your little self to explore what somebody else is, then you shouldn't be doing anything. Uh, all you need is some talent and some imagination to just do this thing which Keats used to call the negative capability, which is the ability to get out of yourself. That's what sympathy is all about, and empathy. The characters exist in this world where many of the traditional foes yes. or downfalls of gay characters don't exist. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we have gay characters who are in the 1980s. There's no mention of HIV right. in the book. Do you regret that decision at all? I didn't want any of these things coming into the story because I wanted to explore what it is that happens when one man and another man are attracted to each other and have nothing to stop them except the initial shame and inhibition that comes whenever you are interested in anyone. There's always an inhibition. This is the father's speech, talking to his son. Look, he interrupted. You had a beautiful friendship, maybe more than a friendship. And I envy you. In my place, most parents would hope the whole thing goes away or pray that their sons land on their feet soon enough. But I am not such a parent. In your place, if there is pain, nurse it. And if there is a flame, don't snuff it out. Don't be brutal with it. Withdrawal can be a terrible thing when it keeps us awake at night. And watching others forget us sooner than we want to be forgotten is no better. We rip up so much of ourselves to be cured of things faster than we should that we go bankrupt by the age of 30 and have less to offer each time we start with someone new. But to feel nothing, so as not to feel anything, what a waste.